Right, we can have a look at the surge in uh, remote working arrangements among Asian companies. Uh, and despite that, our next guest believes demand for office space is expected to return next year. Let's bring in Anthony Kaus. He's Asia Pacific CEO of JLL, one of the largest commercial property brokerages. Anthony, thank you very much indeed for joining us. So, working from home is perhaps uh, here to stay. How does it impact your business then? Well, obviously, uh, it's a broad-based uh, approach. Uh, it, it really depends on what industry you are in. It depends on what geography you're in and what culture you're in. Um, for us here in, in Asia Pacific, very varied. Um, generally speaking, we've been in prolonged uh, lockdowns in this part of the world. And you can start to see this starting to take its toll on a number of staff who are keen to get back to work uh, in, in the region. And I think it's very important to look back at nine months ago pre-COVID when we were really in a world of reinforcing the importance of office in terms of collaboration, innovation, creating culture of an organization, the values of an organization and attracting talent. So we do think that those critical elements of running a company and the office as a tool to run the, the company will come back in 2021. All right. So, I mean, one size doesn't fit all. People have had different types of lockdowns. Some countries have fared better than others. Where do you see that demand then next year coming? Well, I think if you look at demand in, in 2021, obviously some of the traditional sectors, uh, the finance sector, the service sector, are still be, I think, in, in, in decline. And I think that decline is not necessarily about work from home. I think that's real, more um, indicative of what's happening in the industry in terms of retrenchment of, of headcount. But certainly uh, globally, particularly in Asia Pacific, there are sectors which are still saying or still seeing growth. Uh, that would be the tech sector, particularly. We're seeing the logistics, e commerce sector growing, insurance is growing, uh, gaming is growing, and then obviously the healthcare sector are all growing. So, whilst part of the industries are in, in sort of negative mode, some are in positive growth mode, which is propping up uh, the demand for office space in the region. And tell me a little bit about the contours of uh, what, what's likely to happen with uh, your business in the months ahead. I mean, uh, you're looking for opportunities in obsolescence. I don't know what that quite means. And you also got seeing a lot of dry powder on the sidelines too as well. And, uh, and I think what you term also a move up the risk curve. Can you just yeah. uh, explain? Well, maybe touch on that obsolescence. I think one of the things that we've seen throughout 2020, um, in a way, these, we were seeing trends pre-COVID, but COVID came along and actually was an accelerator or a catalyst of significant change. And, and some of that change has been around the health and safety in the workplace. Uh, and that's what that obsolescence term comes in. You know, we've looked at the portfolios across the region, about 40% of office space in the region needs to be upgraded. And to an investor that represents about $400 billion of capital upside, which of course is, is where investors are looking for that capital upside. So that, that's a kind of exciting opportunity that people are, are looking for. Um, you know, during the whole of 2021, we do believe investors will be very focused on looking uh, for defensive strategies, uh, looking to new asset classes. I think they'll continue to chase what we would see as stable income and there's still this kind of insatiable appetite for, hunt for yield. So there are some new growth sectors, new asset classes coming into the market that are appealing to investors. Uh, and a couple of those would, I would include uh, logistics, which is probably the most sought after asset class, certainly in Asia Pacific and, and assets like data centers on the back of really both of those on the back of growth in e-commerce. So, so in terms of uh, the growth in e-commerce and demand for logistics, what kind of growth are you anticipating in the next 12 months? Well, in terms of volumes, uh, the logistics world in 2020 was uh, trading volumes up 20%. The data center world was up 200%. So we're certainly looking to see similar trends into uh, 2021. I think, obviously, this is a very compelling story, particularly logistics in Asia Pacific. Um, you know, at the moment, 20% of all retail sales in Asia Pacific uh, are, e are, are done online through e-commerce, which, you know, again, is a global benchmark of 14%. And, you know, China is a big driver of that um, online sales in China currently at about 37% so of total sales, going to an incredible kind of 60% by 2023. So those are huge drivers of, of uh, the logistics sector. And, you know, we, we believe by 2024 that Asia Pacific itself will account for 50% of global logistics spend. That is why this asset class, strong fundamentals and that stability of income that investors are looking for today.